So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna talk about the Thomas Blug Amp 1. This is the Mercury edition. So there's now a first edition Thomas Blug uh, amplifier, Amp 1, and then now there's a new uh, Iridium edition, which is kind of like the metal version, which is black, that's how you detect that. And then the, he's enhanced the first one uh, and called it the Mercury edition. So what is this thing and why are we talking about it? So the first thing I wanna show you guys is that it weighs two pounds. Now that's not a big deal. You've seen a lot of pedals and I know a lot of you are thinking like it's an Axe FX or it's a multiprocessor and that's not what you're looking at. You're looking at a 100 watt guitar amplifier. This is a preamp with amplifier, this is all you need. You take this in a cabinet of your choice, whether it's a 412, 212, or 112 cabinet, and you can take this anywhere to a gig. This will fit in its pouch in the front of a gig bag, and the best thing about it is it's tube. You can use it as just an overdrive box or a preamp anywhere you want. So if you want to take this and plug it into a PA system or a direct recording interface, that's fine. Again, this is a preamp pedal. So this is essentially fixes all your problems with taking your preamp with you everywhere. But what this adds at extremely lightweight and small footprint is a 100 watt amplifier. Now, how it does that is it uses a class D power section. If you're not familiar with that, that is what's commonly used in bass amplifiers and some PA systems. It is extremely powerful, extremely light. It's also notoriously known for being very sterile. So what they did at uh, Blue Guitars, which is Thomas Blue, is he added a tube. Now there's a, it's a preamp tube, it's a nano tube. I think they were used in Russian radio systems. It's a sub-miniature tube, uh, military graded, used on Russian missiles. <laughs> and it's like the last generation of tubes. So this, the lifespan of the tube is, will outlive us. But what's interesting is he's running this preamp tube in the power section. So the way I like to look at this is, we, a lot of us use a analog stomp box, whether that's your tube screamer or whatever your favorite distortion box is, and you run it into a tube amp. Well, that's what he's kind of simulated here. He's got a analog distortion box uh, mixed with a power station that uses a tube to warm up the, uh, the tone of it. So by using a preamp tube in the power section, he's really simulating what the uh, tube amplifier would feel like. In other words, it would have uh, a sagging kind of feeling. When you hit it, it wouldn't be just immediate like a solid state amp would. Now this pedal does have some digital in it. The digital is some of the changing switching systems are probably digital, but most likely uh, the main thing that's digital is there is reverb in this. So there's a digital reverb. Your controls are pretty straightforward. You have a switcher that lets you switch between the clean channel and the dirty channel, and you have three dirty channels to choose from. And then you have a boost button that you can not only select on both channels of this amplifier, but also on the side, there's controls to adjust how much boost that's gonna have. So if you just want to be a light boost, or if you really want to drive the, the overdrive section of the, uh, of the amp, you can do that as well. Now I want to show you the modern channel. We'll turn the reverb off. I'm gonna push the boost on. There's a lot of features that this thing can, you can add to this pedal that I'm not really interested in. So um, I'm not gonna talk about a whole lot because I, I really like the idea of this as just being this little on the go, small gigging platform. But it also makes a great backup amplifier. A lot of us worry about our amps going out, whether they're, they're solid state or tube, and this would be an amp that you could keep with you wherever you go because it's pretty bulletproof. This is a steel casing on it, and of course the tube was used in a MIG, 
So I can't imagine that's too delicate. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and it, like I said, it takes a lot of abuse. The, the underside is plastic, but it's a hard ABS style plastic. And again, the entire thing shrouded in this metal. So it's pretty impressive. The control layout is pretty straightforward. You have a volume control for the clean, a gain in volume for the overdrive channel. You have, they share the base, metal, and treble controls, and they share the reverb control. And again, you can turn the reverb control on and off. There's an overall master volume. On the back, you're going to have a MIDI controllable, and that's the thing I was talking about that I'm not really interested in, but he's got a MIDI adapter that you can plug into this and control other things that are via MIDI if you're interested in that. Also, you can buy an extension pedal for this that lets you select between multiple, the all three of those uh, gain channels, and set presets and do stuff like that. But again, I was interested in the small form factor of this, so all those other attachments really weren't an appeal to me. It has a 16 and 8 ohm out. That's really cool. It has a record line out, which again, you can use it to record or or you would use this to line out to the PA system. You have an effects uh, return, send and return, but more importantly, you have a couple features which are cool. On the side, you have a serial or parallel switch. And on the bottom, it's got a control for the effects loop that lets you go as far as negative 10 dBs to positive 4 dBs. Why that's important is uh, sometimes you would run some pedals in the effects loop of, of an amplifier and they, uh, they're they boosting the signal too much. In other words, they're redlining your 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 uh, your power section and you're getting a little bit of breakup you don't want from those pedals and if they don't have uh, controls on the pedals themselves like a volume or gain control you could use this control to fix that or if your pedal is sagging down the amplifier or taking too much signal from the amplifier and you're noticing a loss when you're plugging into the pedal to the effects loop you could boost it up so another great feature another cool thing on the side is there's a volume and tone control for the modern classic uh, controls the modern classic distortions and the clean control and that is mostly for the type of guitar you're going to use. So if you're going to use a Stratocaster, maybe you're not going to get the, the pedal to overdrive as hard. So you could boost that and maybe because it's bright, you can back the tone control off. The other thing that's really cool about it is it has two noise gate settings. So this is the soft. And then there's a, what he calls metal. I don't, I wish he would just call it intense or something like that, but you get the idea. It's, and it really shuts off. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we're looking at the controls. Let's go ahead and go to the clean channel. This is the sound I really like the most. And Thomas Blug really says in a lot of the interviews that he's uh, kind of focused this on his plexi sound um, for the Marshall. And that's what I love, this kind of lower gritty kind of... <laughs> Very nice. Let's go ahead and switch guitars. Now, the reason I wanted to switch is this guitar has P90, so you're definitely gonna hear the 60 cycle hum. This is what's nice about having the noise gate. Let's go to the more aggressive setting and listen to this. Let's go ahead and turn that boost off. Now what's great is, I want to go this, now I want to take you to the classic mode. Classic mode without adjusting any settings is going to have more gain. 
But what I'm going to do is use the guitar to clean up to see how much could we use the classic mode and get the vintage mode. So here we go. <laughs> Now what's impressive is the noise gate, it's just about at the threshold where the noise gate's kind of clipping off the end of my notes. On a setting like this, I could actually switch to soft. And not have to worry about the noise gate. To the clean channel, we'll go in the neck pickup. It. Here's what it sounds like boosted on a single coil, or on a P90, I should say. Which is great. If you were playing a gig and you were playing the under chords. And it was your time to solo, you could just do the... It comes with a carrying bag. The carrying bag, the only issue I have with it is the amp fits in the bag perfectly. There's a pouch to put uh, stuff in the top, but what I found was the power cable and uh, much less a speaker cable will not fit in this pouch. So I thought that's something that I was hoping uh, would be a little better, is some room for that stuff. One thing that you have to be very aware of is that because you're gonna put this on the floor in front of you, and you're most likely gonna have the speaker cabinet behind you, you're going to need a 10 to 20 foot speaker cable. So you're gonna wanna go guitar into this and then speaker cable to the cabinet. Um, and so what I've been taking with me is a 15 foot speaker cable, but the cable does not fit, much less does the power, uh, the uh, power cord doesn't fit in this um, carrying bag. So I've been just putting it in a different bag. So something that you'd be prepared for um, that you're gonna have to deal with. It comes with an instruction manual that is very, very well written. Uh, in fact, very well illustrated as well too. So if you have any questions like I did, um, you can consult it. The biggest question you're gonna have is, is it loud enough? It's 100 watts and of course it's air light, but is it 100 watts that you can gig with? Well, here's what I can tell you for sure. Um, jamming, I can tell you that without a doubt, this was as loud as this supersonic 22 watt combo. In fact, just to be accurate, um, I use this speaker out into the speaker of this amplifier. So I use the same Vintage 30 that I use in this cabinet with both amplifiers. And without a doubt, I could tell you they were equally as loud. Playing rock and blues, open chords, uh, a little bit of palm muting, um, there was no issues. However, running the highest gain, the modern feature, and running lots of gain and running the guitar heavy and chunking on the guitar really loud with a drummer who was being really aggressive. It did get a little muddy, but something to keep aware of, the 22 also had that same problem as well and that kind of high gain. So for a metal guy, you might wanna check out his metal one or something that fits your needs better. Um, this, although pulls off the metal stuff pretty good, I don't know if I would take this against a 100 watt tube head any day soon. And before I go, I definitely wanna thank Thomas Blug. I was in Germany and I actually got to do a video with him. However, the video was corrupted. The audio got corrupted and I wasn't able to use the video and uh, they were kind enough to send one of these out so I could do the video here. So thank you so much uh, for that. And as always, I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me today. And until the next time, know your gear. It's a sub-miniature tube, uh, military graded, used on Russian missiles, <laughs> and it's like the last generation of tubes, so this, the lifespan of the tube is will outlive us.